The war in Ukraine has shocked the Western world. Russia has begun attacking Ukraine. The largest invasion of a neighboring country in Europe since World War II. Their answer was sanctions. Very harsh sanctions. Of international sanctions. Economic ones have dire consequences for Russia already. But if, amidst all of this, Russia decides to disconnect from the global internet, the internet as we know it might be gone. Welcome to the Splinternet. What if you were searching for some information on Wikipedia and instead of this page, got this one or this one? That might actually happen. Let's take it back to 1996. This man, John Perry Barlow, gets outraged at the World Economic Forum in Davos when he hears a new internet regulation was passed. He sits by his computer and types out this manifesto, a declaration of independence of cyberspace. Cyberspace does not lie within your borders. Do not think that you can build it as though it were a public works project. You cannot. Well, they can. Governments are building walls on the internet. We all know about the internet, but many people don't know about the concept of the splinternet. You and me, we are so dumb about the modern internet. So what's happening right now is a question over the future control of the internet. Now, imagine you go to do your weekly grocery shopping. You enter the supermarket and see the usual products in front of you. But what you can buy is not actually decided by you. The shop decides who supplies them with apples and oranges. These gleaming white wagons delivering the new processed food product. And seeing American or Chinese brands of chips depends on your country's exports and imports. We feel we can trade with the whole world or not as we wish. Meaning that one day you might come into the shopping market and see that your favorite ice cream is no longer there. Instead, the freezers are fully packed with some off-brand, government-approved chunky ice cream. Because we all know that chocolate flavor leads to a revolution. Let's see our favorite apples and oranges of the internet. Facebook? Blocked. Wikipedia? Redirected to some strange site with information only approved by the government. Google is replaced with a search engine only supplying you with propaganda. And it all changes wherever you are. If you don't believe me, let's hear it from the Internet Society. The Internet is not owned by anyone, and at the same time, it is owned by everyone. So theoretically, a state, if it controls a network, it's pretty much the same as, you know, your workplace controlling your office internet, which means that the state then gets to have a lot of control over who gets access, what you can access, and who doesn't. A splinter net would all of a sudden make things extremely complicated, and that would have repercussions on national economies, for instance, or the ability of people to do business online and gain access to consumer markets that they would not have access to otherwise without the global internet. It. But that's way, way, way into the future, right? The minute that you start making political decisions about who gets to have internet access, this goes against the fundamental apolitical nature of the internet. And it also sets a really dangerous precedent that could snowball into that global splinternet, if you will, rather quickly. The other side of the argument is country sovereignty, which is preached by mostly China and Russia. For example, an official China policy claims that within Chinese territory, the internet is under the jurisdiction of Chinese sovereignty. While they're not yet totally disconnected from the global network, they seem to be heading there. Even Jack Goldsmith, an international law professor, agrees with the sovereignty argument. He claims that we want different countries to have different rules, and those countries should be able to regulate the internet, just as they should be able to regulate any other part of their world. While it is easy to condemn China, quite a lot of countries are treading a red line. Take, for example, the European Union. In 2018, it passed the General Data Protection Regulation, and it's probably the toughest one out there. The regulation forbids businesses from collecting data on people in the EU. Another big argument, at least according to the EU legislation, is copyright. In 2019, they passed the famous Article 13, which was supposed to protect the copyrights of creators. It got dangerously close to banning game reviews, remixes, and memes. And you don't want to mess with the memes. As the law professor Mark A. Lemley writes, countries are drawing boundaries around their race, their nationality, their religion, and so forth. The splintering of the internet reflects that retreat from globalization. So, can we do anything to stop it? Every single voice, every single effort that we can get in joining, you know, all of us in this space who are trying to protect and uphold the open, globally connected, secure, trustworthy internet, every single voice counts.
even if you go out and just amplify this message on social media you know bring this to the notice of your community and your neighborhood ask your kids to talk to their friends and if you have a little more time please write to your policy makers give them a call um but please try and uphold these values that bring the global internet together right it brings all of us together